so very good morning to all so today we will be discussing on the topic of gray relational analysis so this is a one of the kind and type of multi criteria decision making technique which utilizes the gray theory okay gray theory uh, we will be giving a brief introduction of the gray theory this is a theory to handle the uncertainties means different type of uh, type and kind of uncertainty uh, like the uh, the fuzzy set theory or the rough set theory um, or the maybe the probability theory so different type of uncertainty can be dealt with the different type and kind of theories okay so gray theory is also uh, one of the theories which have been formulated to handle different uncertainties with the data okay so gray theory usually was formulated the main purpose of gray theory was to handle the uncertainty mostly with the information so we can say that information uncertainties can be better processed using different techniques with the gray theory and this theory was proposed by ju long dang in 1982 and uh, later he developed different applications of the technique in 1989 so this was the basics of uh, about gray theory so uh, we will be discussing in brief about how we can go with a practical problem solving with the gray relation analysis because usually in the lectures and all with the Uh, shown with the multi criteria decision making problem they will be showing very small examples so that we will not be uh, we the researchers who are working on the techniques they will be having many doubts how to implement for a practical problem or how to implement for a research problem so this is uh, one challenging task like we have to adapt whatever the Uh, methodology which is mentioned for a very small problem maybe of a mobile selection problem with two three alternatives uh, and with one opinion so same uh, uh, the same uh, the methodology or the same problem how we can extend it as a research problem where where we are collecting number of responses and we will be having a number of criteria so this is a challenging task and most researchers will be uh, uh, facing this so that's why we have, we we are solving a practical research problem that is uh, the logistics partner selection problem using the uh, gray relation analysis analysis okay so i'll be giving a brief of the gray theory later we'll go to the gray relation analysis okay so gra uh, is a technique which is uh, mainly with the uh, utilizing the gray theory okay so these are the different type and kind of uncertainties existing and the mathematical theories that can deal with the kind and type of uncertainty so we have first we can say about the poor information uncertainty that is the information we are getting information as partial information we have some of the missing values with the information or otherwise we can say that our data set is very small to be processed we have a very Uh, we have very small data sets for processing or our information have some of the missing values and that kind of information we are getting mostly with the social sciences and related area because we will be having mostly linguistic labels and linguistic opinions when we are consolidating these thing uh, the information there will be loss of loss of data and there will be information uncertainty also so such kind of uh, social sciences or economics or may maybe other uh, streams where we don't have a particular and clear information uh, like in the case of natural sciences you can particularly use the theory of uncertainty and mainly we can use it whenever there is qualitative criteria for evaluation so you have a mix of qualitative and quantitative criteria for evaluation you can think of using gray theory in your research project okay so first uh, we are saying about the poor information uncertainty where our data sets are incomplete or we have missing information next is about the stochastic uncertainty so usually the stochastic uncertainty uh, is a kind of uncertainty when the possible events possible outcome of the events are known because we are uh, saying the examples of maybe tossing a coin we know all the possible outcomes of the event right that is uh, tossing a coin being an event what are the possible outcome either it can be a head or a tail or we are throwing a die dice okay we are throwing a dice we know the pos all the possible out outcomes maybe six outcomes are there we are throwing two dice together there are 36 out outcomes so all the possible outcomes of the event are known but the particular the the outcome of the particular uh, the event is not known so such cases we will be using the stochastic uncertainty so particular trial outcome we don't know but the sum of means total outcomes we are knowing okay so that that kind of situation we will be mostly using the probability theory 
so okay so the the next is the type of cognitive uncertainty so cognitive uncertainty is a kind of situation where it is with the thinking level of the people okay so the cognitive uncertainty can vary with the thinking level of the people okay suppose we can uh, see we can say about one example that a person okay so uh, because of about the concept of young man okay i am giving the examples from the given in the book of sifeng liu and violin you can refer to that book for more details about this okay uh, so uh, suppose uh, we think about the concept of a young man okay so what is the uh, the concept of a young man for me young man may be between 25 and 40 years maybe some other person uh, uh, his according to his concept young man may be between 30 to 20 to 30 okay so this age gap can vary but actually it is the level of it is the variation is the thinking level of the people okay so this kind of uncertainty existing uh, if we uh, with the cognition we say it as a cognitive uncertainty and usually fuzzy set theory is the best theory to handle such kind of uncertainty next is the rough uncertainty usually we will be going with the approximation of the data okay when uh, we are uh, we have practiced in our lower classrooms like we will be drawing a random shape and we will be creating using a graph paper we will be counting the number of unit squares then the remaining position we will be approximating if it is uh, like if the remaining portion if it is uh, uh, like more than uh, the half of the uh, unit square we will be counting as one otherwise we will be neglecting or ignoring and we will be counting the total unit square and we will be getting the area theory can be used in such kind of cases okay and another is a uncertainty okay Un un uncertainty is a, a one another kind of uncertainty usually when the all the possible outcomes of the event are not known okay so uh, we can say for one example like uh, maybe we are understanding that a person is found missing and we know some of the possible places the person have visited maybe he has gone to a temple maybe he has gone to uh, a library at that time maybe to 6 6 to 7 o'clock in the evening he is missing so by that time the possible places he uh, uh, he he might have visited we can make a list still there is uncertainty that so there he can he might have gone somewhere else so this kind of uncertainty we can say that we we are not sure about all the possible outcomes of the event and such type of kind of uncertainty we say it as the uncertainty okay and we, different mathematical uh, theories combination can be used to deal with such kind of uncertainty and the one another or the type of uncertainty is the blind uncertainty the blind uncertainty we don't have any information uh, so we cannot process it so this kind of uncertainty usually we cannot Uh, deal with any kind of mathematical theories okay so this uh, whole uh, introduction i was giving to give a brief idea of where and uh, uh, when we can use the gray system theory okay so uh, coming to the next slide so i already told this system theory was proposed by ju long dang in 1982 and later he developed it in 1989 and we are using it to handle the information uncertainty with the data okay why it is called as gray because it is in between white and black so we use the uh, uh, word gray because we know some of the information it's not exactly black we don't know any information or exactly white where we have the all the information so it's a, it is in between black and white so we denote it using the uh, word gray okay so can bridge the gap between social sciences and natural sciences so this is the way how the information from social sciences can be processed mathematically and we can bridge the gap between social sciences and natural sciences this is the particular use of gray system theory and there is a there are vast application of gray system theory and if you are utilizing the theory you can uh, solve for different type of uh, uh, different type and kind of problems you you are addressing there are different methodologies associated with gray, gray system theory and you can use it and we have Uh, different techniques theories and ideas for resolving okay so we can say that when we will be using this it will be like when the information is incomplete or partially known we will be going for the gray system theory okay this is what i was uh, mentioning about then some of the application 
areas we can say with the supply chain management there will be lot of application you can search in google scholar or scopus you have number of application uh, problems or research problems that have so used uh, the the uncertainty using the gray theory and next is about the logistics and transportation management problems then with the industrial management problems mostly with the, the kind of predicting disasters this kind of problems we can utilize gray system models uh, the particular models using gray system theory and then with the, the agriculture engineering problem or maybe the environmental management uh, the problems uh, with the uh, uh, the environment and uh, the deterioration of the environment and some of the medical applications we can use the theory using uh, different theories of gray systems and uh, other is economics and econometrics application so this is having a vast and wide range of application for the gray system theory and you can utilize typical uh, the methodology using the gray system theory in your uh, in your research to obtain the fruitful result okay so which are the mostly and widely used gray system models we can uh, mention about some of the basic and uh, widely used gray system model one is about the gray relational models another is the gray trade off models then with the gray prediction models then gray programming models gray incidence models gray clustering models and different gray combined models are there so gray relational models i will be we will be discussing the gray relational analysis so this is a uh, particularly with the attribute decision making method only then with the trade off models are there so then we have a trade off in the criteria and we have to make for decision we have to make decision make we have to go for decision making with the, uh, the trade off in the criteria the, the trade off in the criteria or objective so then we will be going for the the gray trade off model then we have the gray prediction model because when we have a small set of data and so maybe periodical data we are having but we are only having maybe for 5 year or 10 year data we are having usually prediction models cannot uh, utilize such data because the predictions made are in inaccurate and we cannot rely on the prediction results but in such cases gray prediction uh, models which will be finding very useful and another is the incidence based models so, so incidence based models are like we have a the it is already it is all based on the developmental tendencies of the data suppose we have some production and we have some of the set of the factors which are influencing production so we will be uh, plotting the developmental tendencies okay tendencies means that maybe yearly uh, developmental tendency or maybe with the region wise developmental tendencies etc etc we can plot and we see that how the developmental tendencies of the main parameter or the main factor is close to the the determining factors so from that we can see that this factor or the particular factor is the most determining factor in the developmental tendency of the system and another is gray clustering model similar to like when the da available data is less you cannot go for the normal clustering methods so then it is needing uh, it is uh, requiring very large set of data for clustering usual clustering algorithms okay uh, either with the k mean clustering or any clustering algorithm you are using you need a sufficient amount of data but when your data set is sufficiently small then we can go with the gray clustering methods for getting uh, the result another is the gray combined models which we are discussing this can be we can use it for different type of combination of these methods maybe the trade off model can be combined with the relational model and the prediction model combine can be combined with the programming model similarly similarly we can put the different incidence mo models uh, can be combined with clustering etc so that we will be getting the proper or appropriate result for our analysis okay so this is all about uh, we are mentioning about the gray theory and the uh, type and uh, kind of gray models for decision making okay so the relational analysis i will be continuing with the the steps and how we will be proceeding with a practical problem we will continue with the next lecture okay thank you